All right, uh, in this video, we're going to uh, begin to start to annotate this information. So uh, the first thing we'd want to do is go to a floor plan and add all of our dimensions to our windows, doors, and um, walls. Um, and just to be to make sure that you understand what I'm expecting you to do, I'm actually going to bring up the checklist that you should be following in order to complete the final project. So we have final project requirements. And the first thing that we're going to check off is um, we're going to create sheets. Actually, let's begin by creating sheets. So we want to create a first floor plan. We're going to skip the foundation plan. You, you all have that foundation plan already defined, and I will update that in the requirements. Uh, or you're going to resubmit your foundation plan along with the ones that you all drew individually in AutoCAD. You're going to resubmit it along with your, your final uh, set. But those should already have the annotation and everything they need on it. We're going to create elevations and section. Okay, so in Revit, we need a first floor plan, elevations, and section. And by the way, for those of you who feel you want to be ambitious and you want to actually redo the foundation plan in Revit, go for it. I think it's a great idea. And you can use the information you have in your CAD file to, um, to recreate that foundation plan. I can give you some guidance on that if you'd like. Um, so let's do that first. We're going to create the sheets. All right, so to create sheets, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And we have a first floor plan and elevation sheets. Um, I'm actually going to delete these sheets and start from scratch so that you know how to create your own sheets. So I'm going to create a new sheet. And I have uh, template files for you to use already that are the correct sizes for um, this project. And you can see right at the top of it, you have the um, arc C size 24 by 18 uh, title block. So select that and hit OK. And this is the title block that you can be using for this project. Now, if you would like to create your own title block, um, go ahead and watch another video I have for you on importing an existing title block from AutoCAD, and then you can um, come back to this video and set up the sheets. All right, so um, the first thing that I need to do when I create the sheet, now we have an unnamed sheet, and I want to have this sheet have a sheet number, so I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to name it sheet number one of, because I don't know how many there are going to be yet, and then instead of unnamed, we're going to call this first floor plan. Okay. Oh, the other thing I want to do to fix, um, everything should be in caps so that they show up in caps on your, on your t titles. So I'm going to change the name of this one to first floor in caps and it's going to ask me do I want to update all that and I'm going to say yes so that's going to clean up some of the things that I I have showing up um, for uh, labels and annotation so I go back to my first floor plan view uh, sheet rather and I want to drag and drop my first floor plan onto my sheet so you you find the view you drag and drop it onto the sheet and just place it now at first it might be way too big um, and also we have a um, crop window that we don't want to see and we have a label that we don't necessarily need to have. So once you bring it in, um, activate the view and we're going to turn off the crop region. Uh, actually we're going to make adjustments first to the crop region and make it a lot smaller. There we go. Make sure you leave yourself enough room for dimensions. You're going to need dimensions so we'll just make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to turn off the crop region and um, deactivate the view. Now I can pick up that view and I'm going to put it on the upper left hand side of the paper. This view label you can choose to keep if you would like or you can use to choose to get rid of it. I like to set the views up so that um, if we edit the type that I have it set to, instead of show title I have it set to show title when there's multiple viewports. That makes a lot more sense to me. So I don't need that title unless I've got another view that I want to be able to define. Um, and then we'd add the label. Okay, so this is going to be where we're going to keep our um, floor plan. Now, on the floor plan, I also want you to add the door and window schedule. And we'll add that uh, right now just to save a space for it. So we want to go to View, Schedules. I want a door schedule. 
and in the door schedule we should have um, the width, the height, and the family, um, and the mark. Uh, I don't remember if it's mark or mark type. So we'll add those, move those up to the top. And I want to sort them by, I don't know yet again, mark or mark type. All right, there's the schedule. Let's check to see if this mark, six, uh, it looks like these are the marks here that we want to use. We want to get rid of mark type. Let's just check our sheet first floor plan and see. Oh, we have to add our tags. <laughs> All right, so we also want to add under annotate the tags, the tag by category without a leader. We add tag to everything. And it looks like everything. All right, so now we should be able to check to see if our doors numbers are matching. So I'm going to tile the view, and I want to check to see in the first floor plan whether or not our doors are matching. There, that door is that door right there. So, so it's mark we want to keep. It's type mark that we want to get rid of. So I'm going to close these other views. We don't need to see them. We'll tile these views. All right, so uh, in this door schedule, I want to edit the fields and get rid of type mark, and then I want to sort by mark and itemize every instance. Perfect. Now, that goes also on my sheet. So in order to get it on the sheet, I go to my schedule and I dra drag and drop the door schedule onto the sheet. That looks good. Now I want to do the same thing with the window. Alright, so I created a quick window schedule. Um, remember that when you do a window schedule, when you set up your fields, you do want to include a count, type mark, width, height, family, and sill height. And then under sorting and grouping, set your sort by type mark and then turn off itemize every instance. And that will uh, give you the count and tell you how many windows you have of that those particular types. Okay, so then that also gets dragged and dropped onto my sheet. And I want to expand that second row so that we get a nice narrow window schedule and so now we have a sheet that has our floor plan along with our window schedule and you can make adjustments to this and rearrange any way you'd like. Um, we do want to fill the sheet so if there's a, another detail that we think we need to add or something like that we can add that to that sheet. So let's create a second sheet, new sheet. So this is, um, yeah, go ahead and save the project. In the new sheet we're picking the same sheet size we had before and I want to rename that um, uh, two of and this should probably be our elevations. Okay, so we're going to drag and drop our elevations starting with the front elevation. I think we should have a nice big quarter inch front elevation. So um, front elevation comes in at quarter of inch as default. We want to activate the view, change the crop region, so that we bring those uh, crop windows in a little bit tighter. Um, we'll keep the uh, level level information showing. We're going to turn off the crop region, deactivate the view, and this is going to become our primary elevation that we focus on. Now down below I want to create a back elevation here, but I don't want it to be a full quarter inch and we also have to adjust some uh, some uh, views here. So I want to change this by activating the view. We can turn on the crop region and fix the fact that we're cutting off half our building. 
And I also want to change the scale. The scale is going to be an eighth of an inch equals a foot. Um, well, let's try three eighths and see if that's a little better. No, nope. oh, that's three sixteenths is what I meant. That's better. All right, so we do set the scale to three sixteenths. Turn off the crop region, and then that view. Whoops, I got to deactivate the view. That view gets moved over to the center. Um, this view goes up here. Title goes here. Okay. Uh, you know what? We're going to activate that view again and make it an eighth. I don't think we're going to have enough room. <laughs> so let's set that back to an eighth and uh, we'll then deactivate the view better. Okay. Uh, we'll bring in our uh, left elevation, which would be to the right of the back view. Activate that view. Turn on your crop region. Control the view of the elevation. Fixing those crop region windows. Um, turn off the crop region, change your scale to eighth of an inch. Then deactivate the view. And I'm going to show you also how you can turn off these levels because we certainly don't need to see these levels in every single one of, of our uh, elevations. Last elevation will be the right side elevation would be to the left of the back view. Uh, activate the view. Turn on the crop region. Turn off the crop region and add eighth of an inch for your scale size. Then deactivate the view and let's put those back in line here. Look for that blue, blue track line because then you know that you're lining it up with the other views. Um, that view label needs to be moved here and the view labels need to be edited. So you click on the viewport itself and change the length of those views to get them to look better. Much better. All right, now um, I want to get rid of the clutter in these views. So we're going to activate these views one more time. I'm going to have you type at the command line VV. This brings up your visibility and graphics window. If you go under annotation categories, you're going to turn off your levels. And then um, right click and choose deactivate you view and do the same thing with your front uh, left view VV and turn off under annotation categories your levels. And then deactivate the view. And I think this is a good way to do it. We can see the levels and reference them for these views here. And then we have the levels on the front um, front view of the house. Good. All right. So then last sheet is going to be your section. So we're going to create a new sheet. Rename that sheet. Uh, three of. And... Um, if you add a foundation sheet, by the way, this would be first floor would be one of, foundation would be two of, elevations would be three of, and section would be four of. Um, so our section, our full wall, uh, building section, would come from our section view. Um, so I'm going to rename this section AA. And then when I drag and drop that section in here, I want to set the section by activating the view to at least a half an inch equals a foot scale. Um, it's, uh, that's pretty good. We'll turn off our crop region, deactivate that view, and then position the section on our sheet if we can get it to fit. Looks like we're just going to be able to get it to fit, which is perfect. I'm going to activate the view again and then adjust that crop region, bring it in a little tighter.
Okay, turn off crop region, deactivate view. So now we're, we've got our sheet set up. Um, and what I want to show you, which is a pretty cool thing that Revit does, if we go back to that first floor plan and we zoom in on the section uh, tag. Remember it had just two dashes in it before, but now it says to go to uh, section 1. And this should say uh, section AA. Uh, I think there's a way for us to change that and then go to 3 of, uh, we end up 3 of 4, sheet 3 of 4. Okay?